Yes, thank you. So, uh, and uh, is everyone present here and ready? We do hope. So let's start. And our first report for this part is uh, an intelligent system based on ontologies for determining the similarity of user preferences. Um, do we have yes, Metro, please? Um, thank you very much. I can share my screen, please. Yes, and I, I will have to ask you to send uh, uh, the presentation for your report because uh, there are no materials. Maybe something something went wrong with the post, with the mail. But uh, okay, uh, this okay. moment or later? After, after, after. No, 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 not, not now, but later on after your report. So you're okay, welcome. Okay. Uh, moment, moment, I will ask, uh, try to, to start. All right, and while you are starting, I will have to, uh, to remind uh, our dear colleagues that we have our time limit of 15 minutes. It's like 10 minutes for report and then five minutes for our questions. If anyone is experiencing some technical problem problems like light lights are off or something like that, then we'll uh, try to listen to your reports to pay attention to your reports later. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, our report, an intelligence system based on ontologies for determining the similarity of user preferences. After Oksana Oborska, Mikhailo uh, Telyatinsky, Dmitro Dosen, Vasil Litvin, and Svetlana Kostenko. Um, moment. This way, okay. Nowadays, people use uh, internet not only to search for information, but also to find new um, acquaintances and people with common interests. The work examines uh, construction of intelligent system for searching for users with similar preferences. System includes a series of tests uh, and surveys to determine uh, preferences. The central uh, component of the system is ontology. This ontology uh, stores uh, users of the um, system and their answers to the tests and surveys. Based on the results of the tests and the surveys, connections are made between the elements in the ontology. Based on these connections, the system makes decision about similarity of the user preferences. The system has been developed and tested as a website. Ontology is used uh, to determine user preferences and to search for people with similar interests. Ontology's server to organize knowledge and are used in areas where it is necessary to discover new facts, to reveal hidden relationships between things and facts. Some requirements are defined to the system the same to provide the need, uh, needed functionality. Um, corresponding basic structure of the ontology had been established as a class hierarchy. And uh, the members object type and the data type properties uh, has been uh, added and uh, elaborated for this ontology. On the next slide, uh, you can see created structure of the domain concepts. This domain is quite narrow and uh, allows us to create quite uh, definite uh, uh, ontology. On uh, Oh, well, these representation of this ontology are presented here. 
uh, so as Ovel is subset of RDF, RDF validators were used to check consistency of the knowledge base created during execution. Uh, we can, uh, we had been created PHP software as a website to access this intelligent system. And uh, you can see authorization form and the registration form for this system do, uh, through the website. Uh, system con uh, contains following software models, registration authorization of users with the possibility of password recovery via mail, ability to edit profile and avatar data, section of uh, passing tests and thematic surveys, section with the result of passive test and the possibility to download any data to PC, section with individual recommendations built by the ontology, Search preferences for network user, recommendations from users with similar interests and preferences. This uh, windows you can see. And the main page you can observe on this slide. The further improvement of information network is represented by uh, the increase of its knowledge base for greater inform informativeness, refinement of the ontology, improvement of the existing base, and development of new sections. It is also planned to introduce uh, internal chat into the information system so that users can communicate directly in the network. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? And uh, I'm happy to remind you that you can write your questions into our chat and we will read them later if it is necessary. So thank you for your presentation. And you. um, I have a question for you. So. What is the uh, implementation or the, uh, so to say, uh, the purpose of your ontology, of your system, which you are developing? Uh, you told us that there is a web application of it. So yeah, yes. I understand there is some practical application. Could you specify on that? Um, practical application is a uh, organized meeting uh, people with similar interest. It's a problem in the, epoch when people start the online and uh, to meet each other they need some special tools like this one ontology helps to um, build relations hidden not obvious for people and uh, they use uh, polls and uh, preferences of users to find out hidden similarities. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, thank see. You. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, and we will go on. Now, the our next topic is elaborative trademark similarity evaluation using goods and services automated comparison. Well, do we have- Hello, yes, I'm oh, here, hello. yes. Great. Can you hear me? Yes, so, yes, we can hear you. So please start your presentation. Okay, let me share my presentation. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Great. So my name is Alexey Horohovatsky. I am an associate professor at Simon Kuznets Kharkiv National University of Economics. And today's uh, topic of my research, of our joint research, uh, is the trademark similarity evaluation. 
Uh, why is this topic is important is uh, because trademark is uh, one of the most popular intellectual property and uh, in order to register a new trademark, uh, an expert should uh, evaluate this application uh, for registering, should compare this uh, new trademark with all existing trademarks. And unfortunately, there is a lot of uh, expert jobs there. Uh, this task seems to be probably automated, but uh, unfortunately, this is not done yet. And experts should compare like in semi-automatic mode uh, this new application for new trademark with all existing trademarks. Uh, additionally, there is no tool to like uh, evaluate this uh, similarity numerical in numerical way. Uh, that's an example of uh, what we're talking about. We have uh, two trademarks here. First line is the first, some common trademark. Second one is the second. We have such fields about trademarks like uh, graphic symbol, name, territory, trademark is designed for status, office, and so on. But the most interesting for us is goods and services field, which is required for all trademarks, for any trademarks. And this uh, goods and services field uh, is uh, like split into classes uh, by numericals, by numbers, according to nice classification. And these classes contain uh, exactly what is this trademark about, about its services, about its uh, goods, and so on. And for example, in this, in this slide, we can see that uh, two trademarks that have the same class, number 45 in goods and services, uh, have pretty different ideas of uh, like uh, of scope of uh, services they provide. For example, here Alexi, it's mostly- uh, Alexei, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm extremely sorry, but your presentation is not going on. So uh -huh. as far okay, as I can you. see, this, there is okay. the first slide. Could you please press F5? Uh, can you see it right now? Presenting? Yes, we can see the slide number three and now number four. Okay, I will leave okay. it as is right now. Okay. Yes. okay, but if you press the F5... Uh, it button. was pressed. It was pressed oh. and it was not moving. So I, I believe oh, I will present I'm sorry. it there. Yes, so do please continue. Okay. okay. Uh, so well-known trademarks, you can see two different trademarks here and they have the same class, but uh, different uh, goods, different ideas of these trademarks and that's a problem how to identify that both trademarks have the same class, uh, but uh, rather different uh, scope work. So data are a problem for this task. Unfortunately, despite a lot of trademarks exist, uh, it's impossible to upload or process information for them. Uh, in offline mode, I cannot download information from these sites. Uh, I cannot even uh, do like uh, processing of a lot of trademarks at the same time. So unfortunately, gathering data is, is a problem and uh, having data is a problem here. And uh, we were able just to gather some limited information about trademarks uh, for, this, uh, for this research. So in order to understand uh, what uh, known methods and metrics uh, are useful for us here, and this is our first step in this, in this solution of trademarks, we trained, uh, uh, tried, uh, sorry, methods and metrics, which are shown in this side uh, to the left part. It is in the left uh, side. Uh, there are methods we tried to use in order to compare goods and services descriptions for different trademarks. And to the right, there are methods that are used uh, traditionally or not with uh, comparison of uh, uh, vectors of word embeddings for uh, separate words in order to understand uh, the similarity between them. And uh, cosine similarity is widespread in this, in the scope. We also tried uh, some distances that are about uh, comparison of uh, multidimensional vectors in, in, in sets of multidimensional vectors, like Hausdorff simil simil distance, Tanimoto similarity. And uh, we tried also our own uh, algorithm for uh, multidimensional, for, for comparison of sets of multidimensional vectors. And the idea of our algorithm is try to avoid uh, like typical averaging of word embedding. So we don't like it. Uh, we don't like that if you have a sentence and if you have embeddings for each separate word, the typical way is to average this uh, 
embedding can to compare some. So this algorithm is just simple based on greedy uh, background and is used to to, uh, to compare directly sets of of vectors. Uh, in our experiments, we used some pre-trained uh, data sets and we used uh, our own data set that contains only 123 page marks uh, for these experiments. Uh, here is a description and we tried to, to find the most similar, five most similar trademarks uh, to this one that contains uh, this uh, class uh, description. And we analyzed, uh, thanks to our experts, uh, if this sub five is, is a good choice for the particular method and metric. And uh, here are our results. Uh, so I highlighted here are the most like interesting uh, tips. Uh, this is about uh, the simplest methods like count vectorizer and TFID vectorizer and cosine similarity, which is a typical way to compare trademarks. And with uh, this yellow, uh, there are highlighted uh, uh, such trademarks uh, from uh, that contain only just two K words. So uh, according to this method, uh, the majority of uh, these top five positions uh, are just classes trademarks with legal services, just two K words. And uh, I will make a step back. That's exactly what we, they're searching for and legal services just it's two K words that are present there. Uh, so as a result for this, uh, for this methods as shown there, we have uh, a lot of very short uh, trademarks with very short descriptions and uh, that's not what we wanted to find here. So this is the uh, next part of uh, experiments where uh, other methods, other approaches. And according to expert opinion, uh, uh, print trained uh, the vector vec model that is trained on text eight data set we tried here is uh, successful and uh, Dr. Vec is the most uh, complicated uh, the most like recent approach we used uh, in uh, our research is successful too and this Dr. Vec uh, is successful based on our own corpus so we just uh, learning on this training on this 183 trademarks we have uh, shows results uh, which are good enough. And uh, this expected because this Dr. Vec is, uh, is uh, I believe, the most powerful model from, from all we, try, we tested uh, in this work. And it's interesting that this Dr. Vec uh, shows uh, trademarks number 27, 28, 29, which are uh, unique. So no other methods and not no other algorithms uh, try to be able to find uh, these trademarks found by these Dr. Vec models. And as a result, uh, our experts uh, were happy with. Uh, with orange uh, highlighted uh, such models and uh, metrics which, uh, which were unsuccessful from, from the expert point of view and all other remaining uh, methods are in between of this, between best and worst. Okay, so as a conclusion, we like uh, uh, selected and choose the methods which are probably useful for us in the scope of uh, topic we are trying to search and trying to solve. And uh, uh, probably this approaches uh, will be helpful in, in further work uh, in this in these tasks. Our contribution includes uh, the new intuitive greedy matching algorithm, uh, which is uh, helpful and uh, our experiments shown that uh, it's okay to use it uh, according to some uh, limited uh, and according to some limitations. Uh, we were able to measure numerically the, the similarity between trademarks and we like uh, be able to create an automatic approach that like allows expert not only to filter out all trademarks that are similar with some system, but only to also to continue this analysis with uh, automatic and automatic way searching for uh, similar trademarks uh, between those uh, that are provided by some uh, system. Uh, okay, I believe I'm done. Thank you for your attention. Ready for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions in the group?
Well, not yet. Okay, uh, Alexei, could you specify uh, on uh, the input data you use uh, for your system? And, uh, well, this is the first part of the question, and then I will go on if you don't mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, our input data are this uh, uh, goods and services description. So we grabbed this text data for all separate trademarks and uh, made a system that compares and searches based on these uh, descriptions of goods and services. In this work, we used only this uh, 45 class as a prototype for, for to evaluate if it's possible to do it all. Okay, so this is this is actually the raw text data somehow. And the second part of the question is the following. Uh, how do you transform uh, this uh, free free form data, free form text data for your algorithm? Uh, well, it depends on the approach we're trying to to do. For example, for uh, Dr. Vec, that's uh, uh, possible to have like sentences and split these paragraphs into sentences for some other approaches. And for majority of them, we just uh, tokenize uh, this text into similar words, uh, removed stop words. Uh, traditional NLP pipeline was, was used uh, here without uh, one just additional that because uh, these trademarks uh, may appear in different languages and that's like international database, uh, all of them are international. So we uh, automatically translated some uh, descriptions for goods and services into English language here. Oh, okay, so you use translation in this case. And what about some uh, unusual uh, phrases, unusual uh, language, so to say, when we we can find in free te form text some slang or some something like that, some contractions? Yes, well, can we... Like didn't use here some analysis of this because uh, mostly these goods and services are like formulated in a very common words, uh, common phrases, uh, which are like uh, there are no a lot of uh, such terms you're talking about there. So just just common common sentences, common combinations of words. Okay, thank you very much. Any more thank questions? You. Any other questions? No, no questions. Thank you, Alexei. And uh, I remind um, everyone that there are videos available uh, in the YouTube channel. So if something was not okay with technical data during the conference, you can refer to, to this channel to see the presentations and the reports. And now we proceed. And our next report is Formation and Implementation of Eco-Oriented Innovation Strategies for Enterprises. Uh, well, uh, hello. 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 My name is Ulana Kohot. I am, uh, I'll try uh, to share my screen. Yes. A minute. Can you see? It you is in the process. Yes. And it's here. So could you start your presentation? So the topic of our research is uh, formation and implementation of eco-oriented innovation strategies for enterprise. Um, the purpose of this scientific work is to study modern approaches to the formation and implementation of eco-oriented innovation strategies and develop a model for formation of uh, eco-oriented innovation strategies within the system of strategic development uh, management. Uh, Micro, uh, massive micro, and nano levels in the interaction with foreign countries. Uh, the current state of environmental pollution in Ukraine and uh, the war results, uh, results in the start of new approaches to the formation and implementation of eco oriented innovation strategies of enterprises, which would allow for, on the basis of strategic management uh, to analyze the trade conditions uh, of uh, the eco-oriented uh, enterprise uh, determine its mission, uh, strategic environmental innovation goals and objectives, uh, identify key areas and preventive measures of eco-oriented innovation development to maximize the use of all uh, relevant resources. Um, the de development of uh, 
eco uh, oriented um, enterprises, eco oriented innovation strategies uh, for should be based on eco oriented methodology and related provisions. As the basic uh, assumption is that innovation strategies form a system uh, with uh, hierarchically interlinked elements, and this system should uh, correspond to the world tendencies uh, of uh, eco oriented development and accordingly to the national uh, economy development um, combining macro, macro, micro and nano levels in the uh, interaction with uh, foreign countries as uh, shown below. Uh, here you uh, can see on this diagram, you can see a national innovation system, uh, regional innovation system, and local innovation system. Uh, the micro level innovation system in uh, their uh, relationships. Uh, the methods for formation of uh, eco oriented innovation strategies will be specific um, uh, to each system level and component. Uh, the development process of uh, eco oriented innovation strategies should take into um, account the goal, goals, uh, objectives. Um, inherent uh, each level of uh, system and maybe uh, strategies reflect on the focus um, or on the objectives uh, and uh, the implementation of national eco innovation strategies include selection of uh, strategic uh, priority, priorities independent many targets of eco innovation and scientific technical development uh, and the implementation of uh, the national innovation uh, process. Um, uh, to, my, uh, to make the decisions about the states of uh, um, equal uh, oriented environment friendliness and currently about successful implementation of equal oriented innovation is under the action of uh, internal and external uh, factors proposed to use the situational methodology and system uh, approach making management decisions based on a comparative analysis of critical indicators of the Korean uh, uh, enterprises, uh, enterprise activities with uh, the indicators of uh, strategic uh, plan. Um, environmental pollution can be um, assessed based on the uh, composite atmospheric pollution index Copy and uh, quantitative uh, value of uh, the atmospheric pollution level generated by the substances present in the atmosphere of a uh, settlement or individual uh, eco oriented enterprise. Uh, here you can see um, uh, different levels, um, uh, you can uh, diff uh, different levels of air pollution based on. Uh, the air pollution index uh, values. Um, uh, during uh, 2016, uh, 2020, this is pollution level of uh, territorial entities and reverting. Uh, the mathematical uh, of the theory of Marco process and the uh, system uh, of Pomogorov um, differential equation, uh, we used uh, to Make and forecast the level of pollution uh, of territorial formation on the basis of uh, copy on this uh, index. And the largest volumes, uh, volumes of uh, pollutant uh, emissions uh, into the air in the result from electricity, gas, steam, and air and conditioning uh, supply companies like uh, this company. And thus, pro, uh, pro, uh, modern problems of uh, functioning and uh, development of enterprises uh, as uh, eco oriented ones require new approaches to their management because they differ, uh, different ecological uh, contradictions uh, have uh, remained unsolved uh, uh, for years. And therefore, the purpose, uh, uh, the paper. Um, in, Proposes uh, put this introduction as uh, based on equally uh, enterprise management 
organization using the homeostatic approach. Uh, the control of many processes of modern uh, eco-oriented enterprise based on the concept of uh, homeostasis uh, uh, can be shown as a bipolar control. This model shown be, uh, below uh, in the form of management through goals and uh, contradictions between them. Uh, the homeostatic approach to the organization of uh, eco-oriented enterprise management allows, based on the uh, contradictions that uh, arise between uh, the, the requirements for eco-oriented uh, uh, enterprise environmental friendliness, their um, operational and economic effects uh, to develop uh, strategy for management of uh, eco-oriented uh, enterprises, uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, here you can see um, uh, the eco-oriented um, enterprise management model, component, uh, component of uh, this uh, model and um, uh, interrelations uh, between these components. Um, for example, the uh, eco-oriented innovation strategy uh, can be the main goal, uh, goal number one. Um, uh, to ensure um, uh, eco-oriented um, enterprise sustainable development, um, it's uh, introduced specifically uh, justified limitation and uh, Anthropo um, anthropogenic uh, pressures and ensure the development of uh, eco uh, technologies which would become in turn the target function of uh, homeostatic management of the production the sphere, uh, goal number two. Yes, we can see uh, here this uh, goal uh, and uh, enhancement of level of eco-oriented uh, enterprise uh, of uh, operational effect, uh, goal number three, and consequently the economic effect as an in, uh, integral can be the target function of um, eco-oriented enterprise uh, homostatic management. And uh, in conclusion, it should be noted uh, that the process formation and implementation of uh, um, eco-oriented enterprises, uh, enterprise um, uh, eco-oriented innovation strategies shall contain the following main sta stages uh, like analysis of the concept of uh, the conditions in which um, EOE operates, uh, defining its missions, uh, uh, assessing um, as, um, the missions and the systems of uh, strategic uh, eco-oriented goals and objectives, assessing uh, eco, uh, eco-oriented innovation potential and uh, external environment conditions and uh, uh, implementation eco-oriented uh, innovation strategy and its um, uh, decision making on the state of uh, EOE environmental friendliness and success of ecologically oriented innovation strategies affected by internal and external factors, selection and implementation of management effects on eco oriented enterprises, and adjustment of uh, eco oriented innovation strategies is proposed using uh, the educational um, methodology, systematic, and homeostatic approaches. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Liana. Um, are there any questions? Dear colleagues, oh, hello. We are we are glad to uh, to say hello to Natalia Valerievna Sharonova, our dear, our dear, dear chairman and uh, well, head of the department. Well, uh, so uh, I have a question for you, Uliana. Could you specify so the ecology problem and uh, implementation of ecological uh, innovations are very important nowadays. 
but how can we estimate uh, the influence of your method? Have you thought about that or? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, we used mathematical uh, mathematical tools. I mentioned about that in uh, our article. It, um, it's um, it's um, described um, more um, more detail. Um, in more detail, and we um, we use mathematical equations for uh, for a guessing uh, of uh, influence uh, of uh, implementation in uh, this uh, Ecorean innovation strategies, and uh, um, for for guessing the state uh, of uh, uh, Ecorean innovation enterprises and how the state can be. And it's uh, changing, changing, changing. Okay, yeah. so so there are certain math uh, mathematical and certain uh, yes, logical yes, yes. algorithms uh, to estimate yes, it. Yes, we use um, market process and systems of Mogoros uh, differential. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions about ecology? Well, no, and uh, I I would also like to remind that you can see, you can watch any presentations and uh, reports in our ch uh, YouTube channel. And now we proceed to the next report. Methodology of evaluation, the quality level of multimedia content based on the emotional perception of the focus group respondent. Right. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Alexander, you're welcome. Do start your screen sharing. Just give me one second. Sure, sure. Yes. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, hello everyone. And today I'm gonna be talking about methodology of evaluation, the quality level of multimedia content based on the emotional perception of the focus group respondents. Oops. Uh, multimedia content is a collection of interactive content data in video and photo format in combination with audio plays an important role in the everyday life of every person. Without thinking about it, uh, every day we receive such information from various aspects of our lives in the form of advertisement, which we do not attach so much importance, like um, passing through a billboard, listening to your favorite radio station, or watching TV. We get advertisement content. All of those, in our opinion, insignificant factors can leave an imprint in our memory. And at the time when we will we'll be in a store or looking for the uh, service, those imprints of this media content will appear in our subconscious. The main purpose of which is uh, a formation of positive opinion about this product or company. And as a result, it is to encourage a potential buyer to purchase the product that was advertised. Multimedia content as known is a combination of various forms of information presentation, such as text, graphics, and sounds. In order to correctly access a person's emotions while watching a video clip, we need a high quality multimedia content that has good recording quality sound accompaniment detailed information about the product and the absence of elements that will distract attention from the main uh, video. Such multimedia content is an important component of obtaining a correct data when, evaluate, when evaluating a given multimedia content by a fo formed focus group. Uh, the absence of one or more elements of high quality content can lead to a misinter misinterpretation of a person's emotions. The, pur uh, the purpose of the, of the focus group is not to reach a group consensus, but to find out a direction of opinion of all participants in this process. Both positive and negative evaluation results are taken into account. 
as each person has their own individual vision for a given advertisement product. The opinion of this focus group respondents is very important as it, is, as it is reflects the percentage of correlation of interviewed people with a positive result to those whose results is unsatisfactory for the customer. On the basis of those data, it is possibly, possible to make more complex calculations from which it is possible to determine whether this product will be in demand among real buyers. The main goal of the audience is to um, receive quality content, which is reflected in the corresponding emotions of satisfaction from the content. The main goal of the customer is to make a profit from the implementation of its content, which directly depends on the satisfaction of the target audience with this content. So in a view of above, the main level of success is human emotions. On this slide, we can see the basic algorithm of automatic recognition of, of, our, of a person's emotion. Firstly, we have to create a focus group. Then each member of this group will be shown the same proposed video content. Our program acquires, the, acquires and processes the image, then removes unneeded elements like a background. Next step is selecting a person's face and then selecting the key elements on it. Okay. Comparing, comparing selected elements to see which ones are changed. Based on the changed program, making the decision, decision which emotion is represented at that current moment of time. Um, in this figure, in red, shown schematically the time when the, sorry, when the, when the respondent does not pay attention to the multimedia content shown to him accordingly, the time when the respondent follows the content is in black. Due to evaluation human emotions while viewing um, the content, we will capture the human face every uh, half a second to one second delay. Evaluation of the respondent emotions recorded at a certain moment, based on which the analysis of the obtained data will take place on seven key emotions, which are neutral, disgust, fear, surprise, anger, happiness, and sadness. Mm -hmm. By getting a grayscale image of the moment from a video, the next step is going to convert it to a multi-level array where each pixel will correspond to its value in the array on the basis of which the evaluation of the shade of black by its illumination is carried out. This table is numerically valued, is directly proportional to the shade of black in the image. The smaller uh, numerical value, the darker shade of black in the area of the image. The pupil of the eye is black, respectively, and the smaller numerical value is displayed on the table. Using the nearest neighbor method, we can see in which direction the neighboring pixels changing from the given one. Uh, the key moment of the face will always be in darker colors, which, was, which is allowing us to easily find them on the face and assess the emotion the correspondent is, correspondent is expressing. As an example, we, sh we showed a presentation of a new phone. When we, uh, then we will identify emotions based on this multimedia content. While viewing it, we will record person's face to capture emotional changes at a certain moment and compare them to the, uh, to the person's uh, neutral state. This, this uh, picture shows us an example of a second-to-second -second photo of the respondent's reaction to the offered content. According to the results of the experiment, the obtained data can be presented to a customers in both tabular form or graphic form. On the graph, presented, the customer can see a complete picture of the respondent's emotional perception of the entire video content. This article co considers a problem with improving the quality of multimedia content that could satisfy the expectation of both users and customers. It is noted that usually the quality of multimedia content evaluated by a focus group formed in a certain way. Uh, taking into account the fact that a person is usually guided by 
emotions, it is proposed to consider it to improve the process of assessing the content. Based on the algorithm for recognizing emotions, which, uh, which working with the video content, etc. A method of evaluation the quality level of multimedia content is based on the emotional perception of the focus group is proposed. And thank you all for listening to me. Okay, thank you for your report. Any questions so far? Well, well, then I have a question. So uh, my first question is uh, the following. Uh, do you conduct any or does your model presupposes any uh, preliminary, any pre-tests of the group uh, um, you are taking your experiment with, so to say? OK. Um... So just to, um, I, I would add, uh, just to find out the neutral uh, position, neutral um, situation, to estimate the neutral um, eye neutral. glance or whatever. Okay, so uh, my model is to identify a uh, person's neutral state, is to actually um, uh, sit and take a photo of a person as he or she sits. In that case, when a person doesn't talk or doesn't do anything, the state of her emotions is neutral. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, sorry. No, yes. no, no, just, just go on, go on. Okay, and then when a person is uh, gonna, going to watch a video content, if she express um, like one of the emotions, let's say surprised, uh, there's a few different factors that can, um, that my model is identifying from a neutral state. So uh, when the person is surprised, her eye is more open and eye brown might be a bit raised from its neutral state. So when uh, all those factors are compared, we can see what kind of emotions that person is uh, representing at the current moment of time. Okay. Thank you. So, so actually, you um, you take the neutral point you as the starting point of watching the video. As yes, far as that's correct. Yeah. Thank you. And another question is the following. Well, oh yeah, Natalia Valerievna. No, 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 no. After you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, my question. Well, no, no. Let's let's go on. It's me who is asking questions <laughs> very well. <often. laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. A little uh, question because uh, I want to know uh, for whom uh, at the first uh, customers, uh, maybe users, uh, it might be useful your system. Okay, so this system is uh, going to be useful for uh, let's say a big businesses that spend a lot of money on advertisement and a lot of that advertisement is not wasn't noticed by actual person if you go to the internet we're going we're going to see so many ads right hand side left hand side bottom of the screen but we don't pay attention to them mm -hmm. uh, thank you thank you i'm satisfied thank you natalia sergeyevna please yeah. Yes, Alexander, could you could you tell us? Um, well, uh, well, a lot of people do wear glasses watching videos, and you do, and me too, actually, frankly speaking. So, uh, does your model um, presupposes any um, any corrections, or maybe it would be a, a, the point okay. of further development? Okay, that's a really good question. I'm currently at the point of trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to uh, get the system working when a person actually wearing the glasses. That's yeah. the main, um, aspect of that. Okay, so we wish you success in your uh, research. Thank you very much. Thank Any other much. questions? Oh, yeah, Xana, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, 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 besides of glasses, uh, what other difficulties uh, did you meet uh, to recognize uh, emotions uh, uh, by the face and to formalize this? Okay, so uh, the few aspects 
what I um, have in trouble at the moment is some people have uh, maybe a darker color of the skin. So mm -hmm. that percentage uh, to compare, let's say, a color of the eye to color of the skin might be lower. So um, actually, I'm in a progress to uh, automatically compare, um, let's say, the darkest point of the face is eye pupil to person face and get that percentage. So mm -hmm. how it will be. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Thank you. Okay, Thank very you. interesting topic because there is a lot of situations of individual um, specific in the eye scene and in the face. So very interesting topic. Thank you very much. Thank you very right. much for your questions. Okay, and we go on. And uh, next report is the model of educational process organizing using artificial intelligence technologies. Oh, really? Great stuff. Let's listen to this. And do we have the reporter? Yes, yes, we do. Hello, <laughs> Alexander. Hello. Right. hello, hello, hello. Nice to see you all. Um, well. Um, uh, my, my name is Alexander Adamowski, and I, I will present, I have, I have half an hour <laughs> to present my paper. But I... Yes, <laughs> probably. If, uh, if the people from the previous section won't turn up, there is a report which was missing. So, but we are ready to listen to you. Yeah, anyway, so I will try to do my best and to be on time. And so uh, the, uh, the, the first thing what I want to add and, to, and I want to stress that the, today's, today we, we marked by the beginning of the intensive development, especially this year, even in Ukraine, uh, intensive development of global electronic information environment, uh, especially artificial intelligence and uh, especially on artificial intelligence. And it is predicted that uh, by 2028, um, we will have like more than $600 billion, the average annual growth of 36% of artificial intelligence. And even now we can see that a lot of in educational institutions, uh, students start to use some elements of artificial intelligence. And the purpose and uh, task and uh, of this work is to develop rational approaches uh, to the application of artificial intelligent technologies as, as well as a model of the rational use. According to the above, the purpose of the research, of our research is to solve the following task. Uh, first of all, to determine prospects of implementing of modern AI technologies in educational processes. Uh, to outline the areas of the AI technologies application form uh, formalization and to develop the model for uh, evaluating the efficiency of the AI technologies implementation in educational process because if we implement something we need to uh, see that efficiency. And the factors uh, that determine the need for radical renewal of the educational system are the in, insufficient uh, consideration of students' interest, the passivity of teaching methods, what we see, especially now on distance learning mode, uh, which are out of touch with dynamic changes in society, uh, the need for periodic retraining or even change a profession now, uh, the reducing the need for specialists in the field of maintenance of traditional industries, their uh, mechanized robotic systems are increasingly used. The dynamic change in the needs of specialists in various fields and increasing the need for specialists who uh, can make creative decisions in various spheres of activity and insufficient attention to the development of students creative abilities. And functional content of learning management system, existing learning management system, is uh, the informa informational reference system for supporting educational process 
the automated library for of electronic educational and methodical materials is what we have already. Automated system for uh, monitoring the level of knowledge, success, and activity of those who study. Uh, automated database of control tasks, automated system of educational pedagogical uh, load distribution, and information and communication system of interactions. The work structure of the intellectual educational system is as following. We have users, uh, in internet of things, and by intermediary who propose to be teachers and intelligent agents and chatbots, we will have, through them, we will have um, entry into a platform. API interface, big data, uh, data, NLP, machine translation, pattern recognition, uh, prob pro probabilistic planning. And the, the complex, from our point of view, the complex model of educational process organizing should be uh, should consist of three sub-models. One is model of the student, one is model of the educational subjects or subject, and one is model of educational process. It's like, like three steps, three sub-models. So few words about the model of the student. How do we see this? Uh, we see this, the, the student's knowledge assessment scale going from, uh, from the, on the base of Bloom's taxonomy, of Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy, well known. So we have on the lowest level, we have completely ignorance. Uh, then the higher level is knowledge, level of memorization and reproduction of information. Then we have higher level understanding, the ability to translate, thought, intercept, in, interpretation. Then higher level application, use knowledge in specific condition, then analysis, decomposition of knowledge for a better presentation of an idea, then higher synthesis, uh, composition of elements for the formation of new knowledge, then higher um, level is forming a field of decision based on certain knowledge, and the two highest level, the ability to build an algorithm and plan a solution to problem, to create that, we call, uh, Bloom called this creativity, and the ability to qualitatively implement the idea and get the final result. And the, the assessment of knowledge control can be represented by every student and every subject. So our result is going through every student, no exceptions, and every subject what, what, what is studying. Then the model of the students in terms of didactic engineering, uh, the task of managing the educational process can be formulated as maximizing the functionality that reflects the educational process by the integrative, the objective functional learning should be maximum. Uh, objective function for the student must, must uh, consist of the student's activity, level of assimilation, uh, completeness of knowledge, deep of knowledge, uh, not just completeness. That what you complete doesn't mean that you understand. So the one more one more criteria is deep of knowledge and the ability of ability uh, of apply knowledge and adjustment function by 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 parameter and the weight for impact at the at the moment of the at every moment of time. For model learning condition, when uh, slice of knowledge are carried out. At separately given moments, a simplified mathematical model can be amplified, so we just make a sum of the criteria. The model of educational subjects, we, uh, we, we compare the methods of assessing students' performance using AI uh, technologies, and we, uh, we uh, made this in, in one table. So we have like control, uh, classical control methods, and going upper and upper and upper, the more starting from strict district uh, sequence, which is uh, discrete, or then going through random uh, sampling of tasks, uh, combined methods of tasking into account, random sampling, control based on the students' answers. This was already used widely, in, especially in the English testing uh, system. 
uh, of English language, uh, control based on the educational material model, uh, model rating method, uh, controlled by model of the student, and controlled by model of the student at the educational material. So we have the discrete method. The result of the assessment are discrete, structured, and his historical structure. The, uh, the time of the event and defined periodic, random periodic, and permanent discrete, and during training, all time during training. And uh, we have assessment of adaptability, uh, uh, adaptability to the uh, of models. We have educational uh, process, educational subject, and, uh, and, and the student. So we have ab uh, completely absent uh, adaptability on the classical uh, simple method. And then we have low, medium, and the highest methods are the, with control model, a model of the student and control by, by a model of the student and the educational material. Then we made a survey and we, we um, summarized the, the structure. If we're talking about the education, the model of the educational subject. So we made some sur uh, nine surveys and we, we put it in the um, um in, in these graphs so we have uh, we and and also we made the analysis of the ai to support the infrastructure of educational institution uh, where zero is the no uh, no um influence at all and 10 is the highest uh, position so uh, uh prospect using to support uh ai infrastructure you see uh, operational support and of educational process university activity planning and doc document student training also we made the uh, such graphs you see that much higher results for development of educational programs uh, subjects and the informational content because we need to to change that content uh, continuously, uh, distance learning technologies. What we what we do have uh, support personal potential and control measures. Uh, then we made uh, the last the model. The third model is the model of educational process. So the we add algorithmic functional filling the educational process model. So we we found the current state. We compare the current state and forecast for next five years. We made. For a custom, the effectiveness of educational process model can be represented by the formula as the sum of weighted function to uh, multiply the calculated value of efficiency and the implementation. Uh, finally, <laughs> why, why we do and why we investigate all of these things. The use of AI technologies is primarily determined by that level. First of all, level of the implementation and hum in human activity today. It is appropriate to indicate three generally accepted levels of development of AI technologies. One is the lowest level, artificial, uh, the narrow, the general, and super. Uh, so we have narrow. It's a permanent and spontaneous application of various autonomous household AI technologies. Then we have general and intelligence uh, replace the knowledge of specialist, a specialist tutor. And so super intelligence, that's what we are trying to build in the future, the forming of an eco-educational environment for the educational training of the user, which is oriented toward lifelong learning. And then additional risk, uh, what, we, what we've got here, for example, the ethical plan of equating computer self-awareness with the person. Conditions and advantages of implementation uh, of the pro proposed model of additional process organizing using AI elements, availability of qual uh, qualitative and quantitative data, the ex expediency of using model, availability of appropriate information and technical infrastructure, com compliance with ethical and legal standards, availability of AI specialists. Advantages, assist assistance in uh, edifying in identifying the individual needs of students and adapting the educational process to their needs and level of knowledge, facilitating the collection, pro processing, and analysis of data, which makes it possible to make more accurate forecast and improve the organization of the learning process, and improve tracking of student process and reporting on academic achievement. 
and conclusions the most promising direction in the qualitative improvement of the higher education system is the widest possible implementation of AI technologies in the information system of universities, which is aimed at providing conditions for adaptive personalized lifelong learning. The implementation of AI technologies in educational process is determined by the a wide range of modern AI technologies, uh, different functional directions, development of educational information system is a creative process that is unique to each educational institute, each speciality, if, if you want. Uh, rather, a special process of implementation of new digital technologies, which often requires the transformation of educational and methodological standards, and there is a bias toward decision made using AI. The cost of implementing AI technologies is quite high, like everything on the first stage, and therefore the implementation project must be well funded. That's all for now. Ready for questions? Uh, I, I think we will have a little discussion here as I Yes, uh, I also hope so. Thank you, Alexander. So, dear colleagues, that's the topic which uh, tackles us all. So maybe questions, suggestions, uh, don't know, anything? Who would participate? No? Okay, let me start. So, Alexander, this is really very interesting question and I'm I'm so glad that Natalia Valerievna is present here because this topic is really, I don't know how, it's painful for us all in a good way. So, so my first question is um, the following. Uh, how does your model, uh, the, uh, so to say, intellectual um, system uh, model, how does it correspond with the modern methodology itself? So the theory, so to say. Um, oh, that's, 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 that's really a cool question. Yeah. The yeah. theory of, uh, of every subject, you mean from here or the theory of artificial intelligence? So, well, so to say, well, well, my, my point is that uh, usually the information system specialists they form especially when they have when they deal with big data they form their own uh, opinion so to say based on this data but does it correspond anyhow with the theoretical part with no, the methodology teachers that, are taught with is, or maybe is, we should change this theory what is it? Uh, what that about is, it? That is really good question. That is that is just the for now that is the weakest point of presented model because oh, there is no sorry. theory for now. Yeah, you just you just found it from the from the first question. Yeah, that's what we that's what we want to start to build the theory. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes. Okay. That's, that's a good question. Yeah. Yes, and another question is, uh, uh, well, you you have told about the unique system in every university, and what about your system? Uh, would it uh, would it be able, or is it possible to apply it to any university, or does it need any adaptations, or does it need any specific environment? Uh, yeah. so to mm -hmm. say like mm -hmm. educational process specified for it yeah. this is this is also the very good question what i just the, the final my conclusion was just open for discussion exactly for this that's what i wanted to this this discussion what i wanted it's like it's like a model system you know every university has its own system and they no one and they invest money in this and they doesn't want to uh, to share they can just okay. sail it. So I think, and that, and especially that is really personalized. That would be really personalized. Mm -hmm. Personalized. Personalized. Yes. Personalized. I mean, for uh, personalized, I mean for every subject, for every uh, educational program, for every uh -huh. teacher, and for every student. I mean, that is like a complex system. So, so it's it's really uh, the 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 base of that system for future we can just sail. The good example is like a Moodle, you know. 
if I made the course in the Moodle one course, I cannot just give it to you because you have completely different view, even for the same subject. Mm -hmm. I can okay. give you just the, the, the base, the frame, and you will just continue to fulfill that. That's, that's our vision for future. Okay, because, uh, well, it seems to me, though, I'm not, not really so deep in the in informational system technologies, but it seems to me that it's like, okay, the informational system and AI, they are doing it universally for everybody. And no, 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 yeah. never. No. At, okay. at least not in, not in this stage, not, not, not in this stage of, of, of development of AI, <laughs> not today. <laughs> Okay. That's our future, future goal. <laughs> Everyone is talking about this chat GPT and like saying, you may sure. ask any question to it and it will help you, it will save you. You may ask, but that the, the answer will not be, uh, first of all, not creative. What I showed on the Bloom's taxonomy, not creative, it's just, this, I mean, yeah. still creativity for artificial intelligence. Okay, so your statement is that uh, any research in uh, in the field of any subject uh, would be um, would be valuable, would be sure. necessary. Sure. Yeah, sure. thank you. And uh, I have another question. That is the progress. Okay, could could you repeat it once again? Because that is a progress. Any re we need all research in all fields, and they just we need to collect all of them. It's okay. just the beginning. It's, the, it's just the beginning. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, well, I have one more question, but maybe anyone else would like to participate. My no? suggestion is, my suggestion uh, was, uh, it was necessary to uh, have this uh, topic on the now, our plenary session. It was very interesting, it might be. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much. Yes. Thank I, you. I, I do hope we would cooperate, I, I was, uh, well, Natalia Valerievna, if I may propose, if I may suggest to Alexander to our cooperation, because this is really very interesting and very, um, very deep and perspective uh, topic. Yes, uh, but uh, I think so that uh, our conference uh, is our cooperating. Okay, yes, Alexander. For this, for this uh, con conferences are organized. <laughs> yeah, Alexander. And what about the role of a human expert in our AI future world? So, how That's... would you um, state where would you place him uh, or this, her? This is here. Okay. That's the 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 human presence must be must be always. <laughs> I mean, more or less, but on some stages that should be always there to control and to make some mistakes and to improve the system. I mean, okay. to write something to the, that that feedback, that continuous feedback must must include the uh, the human always. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. On today's on today's stage of development, sure, some some uh, parts of the model could uh, must work with, without without teacher, but that on the intermediate between users and and the platform, I think must uh, the 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 there must be the, the the a teacher or some advisor or programmer or I mean the the human. <laughs> Yes, and this this uh, this point uh, leads us to our next question. So, what what would be the requirements to this person? Sh uh, should it be an expert in this field, or should it be an expert in uh, information system and AI, or yeah, should there be several um, several uh, experts, so to say, an expert in the field and one expert in this system? A plus one expert in educational process. Mm -hmm. As I usual, mean, the, yeah. the administrator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so... that, that as always, a group, a system, a group of people, which everyone must be and control his or her own subdivision of, of, the, pro, of the educational process. Oh, Aksana, you're welcome to join our discussion. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I would like to say a small remark that maybe the other uh, another expert is, is a human expert in uh, uh, human behavior, like psychologist. 
because the students, uh, etc., they need uh, some uh, human tutor to my mind. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. that that is good suggestion. But my thing is that every teacher, especially in higher education, must be a psychologist. <laughs> Uh, theoretically, yeah. Theoretically, Why yeah. Why not? Why not? I'm not at sure. Least have, at least have basic knowledge to work with students. Okay. Well, frankly speaking, just well from the practical point of view, at school nowadays, then teachers, both teachers and pupils, are facing uh, some troubles, some problems of uh, constant interaction or constant online interaction. Well, I do mm -hmm. know that teachers are really tired of, uh, uh, of staying with the computer constantly and not having all these process offline. And pupils are also, well, facing some psychological um, questions, issues, which we do not know about even. Well, yeah. it's a kind of new problem maybe. <laughs> Well, having a, a schoolboy out there in another room, uh, well, sitting with a computer all the time, well, I'm not sure we don't need a psychologist, a consultant <laughs> of a kind. So that's true, true. Right. Any other questions? Very interesting. Thank you very much for your uh, very nice and very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you yes. for questions. If 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 I got question, that mean, means that someone listened. <laughs> oh, Alexander, yes. If if it is possible, I will contact you <laughs> in the nearest future because that's very interesting, and that that's also the part of my everyday job to uh, to carry on this educational process management i mean not not the only educational process but the management also so right uh dear colleagues uh, uh, what about the report an intelligent adaptive dc voltage stabilization with a digital control contour do we have any anyone who can present it no I'm afraid not. Then we'll have to wait. And right now we will have uh, the coffee break. Thank you very much for your participation. We will meet in say 15 minutes uh, at 12 uh, o'clock 12 mm -hmm. o'clock in Kiev, right? In Europe, this will be 11. Uh, and see you all in 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go Thank on. You. Thank you.